Good morning. Good morning. As always, it's a great day to be in the house of the Lord. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. Uh, Dudley, you got some good rain got at your place. Real good rain. Real good rain. So thank the Lord for that. Uh, our prayer notes this week, uh, Fred and Merv, if you would be sure and drop Fred a, uh, Freda a, uh, a note and just kind of encourage her heart. And those go right back here to Sharon. Uh, so if y'all would uh, make sure those notes circulate back to that area then. And let me just say, um, I'll leave early to de go work at the desk. If I leave and you still have yours, if you'll give it to either Bev or Brenda, because yeah. I know I'll sit down. Okay, so uh, prayer notes. Make sure you uh, use those. Hey, uh, I'm, I'm falling behind. Too many things. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> you ready now? I'm ready now. Okay. Uh, birthdays this uh, uh, week on the 28th, Melissa King. So let's uh, wish Melissa a happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Celebrating their 59th wedding anniversary oh, this wow. week. Wow. Uh, Pat, what do you uh, attribute to the longevity of this marriage? Kendall's patience. Okay. <laughs> and love. And love. And love. <laughs> okay, as we uh, go to the Lord in prayer, we have a, a quite a few prayer needs. Uh, of course, we need, we need to continue to remember Freda. In our prayers, uh, Barbara and Weldon, uh, we need to continue to lift up. Uh, Lois and Lowell have both had COVID, and Lowell spent some time in the hospital getting some fluid uh, drawn off. Uh, so they're going to give it one more week, uh, uh, Lois said, before they come back. Uh, Beth uh, went on a cruise and came back with COVID. Uh, so she's out with that. Uh, Johnny and Paula. Uh, uh, came back from Costa Rica and came down with COVID. Uh, so, uh, need prayers there. Friend and Paul, we're going to continue praying for you all, and Charles and Helen. Uh, Kathy and Branch Hack, we need to continue to lift up. Uh, Mary Lou uh, broke her elbow, uh, so uh, we need to lift her up in prayer. And um, uh, the folks in uh, New Mexico, uh, suffering from these fires, we need to lift up. We had some really good friends uh, from our church in, in Pitcoke. Uh, they lost their cabin up there. So, uh, WB said it's just a pile of ashes uh, now. And the uh, sad thing about that, it just sold his business and retired last year. And so they were getting to where they could really use it. And, uh, and now it's gone. But uh, over 500 homes destroyed in that fire as we speak. And it's still very little of it still contained. So uh, folks in New Mexico, and I know some churches up there have been affected uh, by this fire. Um, need to continue to pray for our country uh, as we approach this 4th of July holiday. Uh, let's lift up our country. Uh, it's in need of a lot of prayer. Uh, a mass shooting on Juneteenth, another mass shooting, I believe, in Arkansas. Uh, at a uh, small grocery store. Uh, our, our country's sick, folks. We, we need a lot of help. Uh, any other prayer requests that we need to bring before the, the group this morning? Yes, ma'am? I'm having knee replacement surgery on oh, I'm having knee replacement surgery on Wednesday, and I'd like you to pray for a successful surgery and recovery. Okay. Yes, ma'am? <coughs> Um, last week I asked for prayer for a friend who's homeless and I have her permission today. She said she's so desperate she would love for anyone to know that um, we need to pray for her to get a job and a place to live. Her name's Patricia Adams. Patricia. 
she's a member of our church and our Bible study. Anyone else? Any praises this week? Yeah, they didn't put her arm in the cast, so she's not helping us. <laughs> so you don't have to cook? cook? You don't have to cook, right? <laughs> what do you mean, can she still cook? <laughs> I apologize for him. <laughs> uh, one of our granddaughters turned 10 on Friday, and we will be heading up. They live outside of Nashville. So we're heading up there this week uh, for a few days to celebrate with our favorite 10 year old in the whole world. Oh. <laughs> Anyone else? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day and for the little bit of rain we got this last week and for somewhat cooler temperatures. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to come together and encourage one another with words that lift us up and help us in our faith and journey. Lord, we thank you for the ministry of this church and may it continue to be a beacon of faith, truth, and love to the surrounding community. Lord, we bring ourselves before you just as we are, broken, sinful, and weak. We confess that we are fickle people saying one thing and doing another. Forgive us for we have sinned. We say that we want to follow you, but we turn around and walk the other way. We say that we love you, and yet we do not love our brothers and sisters. But you are gracious, compassionate, and slow to anger. And for this, we humbly thank you. We know that you are here, ready to hear our prayers and of confession, Lord, and to help us turn from our sinfulness. Again and again, you forgive. Thank you for not treating us as our sins deserve. For your love and forgiveness, we worship you. Lord, we come before you in faith, seeking your healing touch. We believe in your power to restore health and well-being. We pray that you would lay your hand upon those we have called by name this morning and remove any sickness or pain from their bodies. Grant them strength and vitality so that they may continue to serve you and others. For those who have lost loved ones, we pray that your peace and comfort sustain them in their time of Lord, we praise you this morning, saying, Praise be to the Lord, for he has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him, and he helps me. My heart leaps for joy, and with my song I praise him. We pray this in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And everyone agrees by saying, Amen. Amen. Bill, can I just say one? Sure. Wait a minute. Um, first of all, I want to thank the Ewings for the donuts today. We always appreciate them. And um, I'm passing the calendar for donuts. We're, we're pretty good. We need a few places in July. And will you please put your phone number that so I can text you a reminder when, if and when you sign up? Thank you, Greg. Oh, we you sign up. <laughs> Thanks. No <laughs> ifs. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Bill is going to the people that have COVID. It's very obvious you don't go out of the country, okay? Uh, share with you, I, uh, I can't remember the last time I cheered for the Aggies, okay. 
College World Series is uh, Tennessee and Texas A&M, two great teams this year. A&M won yesterday and a great game, 9-5, and they play today at 1 o'clock on ABC. And uh, they win it all. So, I'm rooting for the Aggies. Your mic is on. I didn't turn it on. Uh, the reason it's not on. Is that better? Is that better? Just a minute, I didn't turn it on. All right. That's, that's on. That's it. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. The title of this is, Aren't You Glad You're Here, or Wish You Were? Texas. Did you know? We all know the state of Texas is huge, but most don't know about Texaplex. What about this? experiencing a wave of growth of historic proportions more than anywhere in the world. In 2020, four years ago, the population of Texas, the Texas Triangle, reached nearly 21 million people. The Texas Triangle contained five of the 20 largest cities in the U.S. It was home to more than 70% of all Texans. City of Dallas, City of Fort Worth, City of Austin, Houston, and City of San Antonio. The Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport, DFW, is bigger than all of Manhattan. The University of Texas at Austin is the third largest landowner in the United States. You know that, does it? You did, okay. <coughs> San Antonio is bigger than New York City and Detroit combined. New York City and Detroit. That big. Houston has a bigger population than Colorado and 34 other states. Four of the top 10 metro statistical areas are in Texas. The Texas economy is on fire. The state added 660,000 new jobs last year more jobs than any other, and twice the number of new jobs compared to its historical average, with Dallas by far leading the growth. 50,000 jobs a month, I mean, that's almost 2,000 jobs a day, every day of the week, for the entire year. No state income tax. The Texas, Texaplex is home to over 50 Fortune 500 companies. 50, and has more Fortune 1,000 companies than any other state. At 2.4 trillion, Texas is ranked as the ninth largest economy among the nations of the world by GDP, ahead of Canada, South Korea, Russia, and Australia. Texas is the largest exporter of goods in the United States. That's, that's huge. That's a big statement. Largest exporter. Dallas is home to the fourth most billionaires in the world. 
Houston has more than 5,000 energy related firms and is the energy capital of the world. The Texas Medical Center is the largest in the world, located in Houston. 25% of all retail space in the United States is in Texas. That's Austin is the live music capital of the world. South by Southwest, Austin City Limits, um, live at the movie theater. 12 professional sports teams are in the Texaplex. 12. Uh, you can further your education in the great state of Texas at any, any one of 159 universities and colleges in order to prepare, prepare yourself for a successful and prosperous career, including six medical schools. Texas A&M University has an enrollment of 70, this was a few years ago, 75,000, the largest student body in the United States. I, I didn't have any idea if that's still true or whatever. Anyway, I just thought some of those, just, just, the story, the statistics is interesting. Uh, if you live in Texas, you're proud of it, but um, we've been blessed with good leadership over the years. Um, okay. It is someone. The greatest commandment, Mark 12, 28 through 34. Um, I'd like one reader, chapter 12, 28 through 24. 28 to 34. Short, easy, still reading for me. Thank you. But I have pulled up. You need a microphone. I know. Yeah. I haven't got it yet. <laughs> okay, that's good. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked, of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Well said, teacher, the man replied. You are right in saying that God is one and that there is no other one but him. To love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, no one dared ask him any more questions. Uh, my first uh, sentence and what you just read was a little bit different. One of the teachers of the law came and heard Jesus arguing with the Sadducees. Arguing, not discussing. Arguing. And then seeing that Jesus gave good answers to questions, he asked Jesus, which of the commands is most important? You want to get back to the very top. The central rule of, of living has to do with love. L-O-V-E, underline capital letters. The central rule of living has to do with love. When Jesus was asked, what's the main thing of life? He didn't hesitate to answer. 
just as we need to think broadly about ways to express our love to others, we must be constantly widening the scope of our love for God. Here's the question. Think of someone you love very much. And how many different ways do you show that person your love? How many different ways? There's something you say, there's something you provide, there's something you surprise with. What? There's all kind of answers here. Give me some of them. By paying the credit card bill. <laughs> paying the credit card bill. That's a, a deep expression of love. He just got slapped, too. <laughs> Okay. Others, come on. Commission. Real simple. Yes, ma'am. Commitment. Forgiveness. Commitment. Commitment. I'm sorry. Commitment. Very, very important. Very important. Very good. Others. Come on. Simple stuff. Come on. Must not be very simple. The questions get harder, okay? This is easy. <laughs> Suzanne? Uh, we're all talking, and I think it's easier to talk about family members and friends, but before class started, we were talking about Mosimo de Campley and what he did for his fellow restaurateurs in Waco. When True Jamaica burned, he loaned them a food truck. When Hellberg had their fire, he donated entire days uh, or evenings uh, money to the fund for Helper because he, he wanted to help his fellow men in the business. And I'm just saying, sometimes it's harder to do things for people outside your sphere. Yeah, yeah. And he, his competitors who he gave his, his money to. His competitors, yeah. That's, that's unheard of. Uh, <coughs> that's huge. You know, that doesn't get much play in the media, does it? Conflicts um, in Jesus' ministry were coming to a head. His opponents, the Jewish leaders, the Jewish religious leaders, were threatened and were reaching the end of their patience. Jesus responded countless times to their trick questions and verbal traps. He showed that he was more than equal to the task. So much so that one teacher of the law decided to ask Jesus a question that had been on his mind for a long, long time. The Lord's answer left him with much to think about. Okay. What did Jesus say is the most important thing in life? What did he say? Love. Ma'am? Love. Love. Period. Underline, explanation, point. Um, <coughs> why is it a challenge to love God as he commands? Why is it a challenge for us sometimes? I was actually thinking about this this morning before we came to church and I think it comes down to how self-centered we are we're all we all feel like we're the center of the universe I mean we know that's not true in our heads but we act like we're the center of the universe when we make snap decisions we're making those decisions based on the fact that we're the center of the universe and and we laugh at people and say oh well yeah it's all about you right but really, when it comes down to it, because we're all broken, 
It's all about us individually. It's all about me. Yeah, it's all about me is right. Very good, though. Yeah, God gave us an ego. Why do we struggle to love our neighbors? Wait a minute, we got one. Here. I don't know, Krista. I don't know about y'all, but for me, it's hard to even understand what it means to love the Lord with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. I just, uh, you know, asking Him to show me how to do that is a whole lot of prayer, because it's just hard to even understand what that means. Yeah. If you really want to break it down, it's kind of, it's not easy, it's complex. Others. Why do we struggle to love our neighbors? I'm sorry, Suzanne. I heard this statistic, but I decided to look it up anyway, so, uh, but only three in 10 Americans say they attend religious services every week. 21% uh, go every week. 9% go every other week. 56 seldom go. And 31% uh, never attend. If that's not a, a sign of our selfishness, because we always find other things to do. Yep. What was the first statistic, 30%? Total of 30% is all who attend church uh, regularly. I wonder what it was um, 25 years ago, you know, 50 years ago. Uh, 50 years ago, it was probably a lot higher. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Suzanne said back then we had the blue law. The stores were the closed. Stores were all closed the, even the grocery store. The stores were closed. Yeah. Uh, where did we go for the first time? A trip, Krisha. I think it was the Cayman Islands. We flew in and got there Sunday, like at noon. And we said, we've got to go to the store and buy wine, buy some food, clothes. <laughs> All day long, all night long. Sunday, it shut out. I don't know how we survived with that. <laughs> I don't know, is it that way today? I don't know. It is. Yep. Well, Saturday's a big shopping day. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I think that makes that interesting. What does it mean? What what a mean you, you, you can't get that question out yet. I'm sorry. We got all morning. I just wanted to mention, coming from Austin to Waco, we have found more places closed here on Sunday than in Austin. Many more restaurants, many more, and, you know, also here in Waco, one of the first questions anybody says is, have you found a church? Where do you go to church? I think Waco is above the, the average statistic. Yeah. I would like to think so. I'm going to say this, and, and I don't apologize for it, but it's our job, it's our responsibility as a nice man to ask those kind of questions. That's, that's, I'm going to use a, a non-religious term, it's recruiting. Okay. Um, sometimes people want to be asked, of, they just don't walk in the door, they just want to say, you got the prettiest steeple in town, that's why we came. <laughs> you know. Um, when I invite somebody, I said, we'd love to have you here the hours, come a little bit early, because parking could be a problem. And uh, now there's areas designated just for old people. <laughs> <laughs> what do they call that? Age? Senior. Senior parking. You know, whatever. <laughs> okay. You're, you're parking at the wrong ground here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I park on the street and leave all those spots. For what does it mean when a person is 
not far from the kingdom of God. Not far, that's what this author, this is exact, his exact words. What does it mean when a person is not far from the kingdom of God? I told you the questions are going to get harder. Yes, ma'am. I think one of the things is twofold that when it means you're never far from the kingdom of God, He's always there. You just have to ask or you just have to seek Him. And the second thing is, life is short. So, <coughs> time as we know it is like a leak of an eye for Him. Mm -hmm. So, I think in my mind, that's what that means. Okay. Good. I like that. Others. Did we cover the first question, why we struggle to love our neighbors as ourselves? Why do we? I'm, I don't get 100 in this category. I don't even get 90 in this category. Um, We're lucky, we got great neighbors. <laughs> okay, well think outside. <laughs> Your neighborhood. Neighbor means yes, that, and it also means People in your community, okay? Bill? Johnny, you know, when I was growing up, uh, people sat on the porch. And uh, when your neighbors walked by, you talked to them, or you invited them up on the porch, or they invited you up on, the, on there. So you actually knew your neighbors. So when you know someone, it makes it easier to love them. You know, we go into communities now, and you never see anybody outside the house uh, working in the yard or doing anything. Even on pretty days, Even on pretty days. 70 degrees, you know? So, uh, you know, I think that's why we struggle in the United States, uh, particularly uh, with that aspect. TV has you know, a lot to do with that, too. We don't know the people in our neighborhood. Well, it keeps people confined. Television occupies their time, just sitting on the porch and you know, howdy and people. Um, I just found my magnet. I knew I'd put it somewhere. Uh, yeah. I borrowed Fredders, so you know. Um, Tony, yeah, I think ma that it's like Bev said, uh, it's all about us. We tend to think uh, we're more important than our neighbors are. Yeah. You know, I can remember when I was a kid, up at the gas station, sometimes there was a card table and they were playing dominoes behind the behind the gas station, mm -hmm. all over all over the place. Right, people got together and had a good time. Yeah. Besides the lack of porches, which I see, the lack of sidewalks, all the new communities. Uh, my youngest son lives in the most fabulous community, and there everybody's out on the sidewalks. Uh, nobody roller skates like we did on the sidewalk, but they're walking their dogs, they, they're exchanging plants from the front yards, they have a called Porch Fest, a music festival in the neighborhood. Everybody can get a little band or group and sit out on their porch and play music in the summer, and they do that every other Saturday. And you can bring your cooler and walk up and down the neighborhood. But when we did without sidewalks and we did without porches, you're making creating barriers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good point. Uh, Trish and I and Trisha's sister went to Tyler for uh, an event for Trisha's nephew engagement kind of party, whatever. And that was Friday night, and then Saturday morning we were uh, uh, arranged to have lunch with. <coughs> Our, my best friend growing up, and my best man, my wedding, et cetera, et cetera. They lived in Tyler forever, so we agreed to meet them at 1130 at a restaurant. So we had about an hour and a half to kill. And so we drove by Trisha's old house, and we drove by my old house. And when we drove by my old house, there was a man out there moving a hose around. So we backed up, rolled the window down, and introduced ourselves. He said, oh, you're Johnny. And I said, well, how do you know? He said, well, your dad was Johnny, right? His name's upstairs with Chloe on the bar up there, you know. <laughs> the house looked great, it was in great shape. He said he'd been there 17 years. 
and raised two girls there. And, uh, but I, I said, you know, when I was growing up in this house, this curb wasn't there. It was an asphalt street. And we didn't have weed eaters then. We had moors and we had these things. Clippers. <laughs> yeah. And uh, then I looked across the street and there was a sidewalk. And I said, I remember the day that sidewalk was built. I said, it was like an interstate highway for kids. Yeah. You know, you could drive your bike as fast as you wanted to sit down the middle of the street. And, uh, Anyway, we had a good visit. I bet we talked to him 15 minutes, but really nice person. But it's, just, it's a small world when you drop People by. who are friends with their neighbors, it's almost like the fifth commandment from the Lord. I mean, you get more practical. You, you get what, make, Bill? Get better practical. You get what? You get, it's more practical things just go better for you. When you they say love your neighbors yep. as yourself, but be, honor your parents. That's the one that ends up being okay. You, it's almost like a lot of us that only do something because it makes a fast buck. And it, yep. That's what it says for fifth commandment. It's all about you and your parents. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> well said. Uh, oh, God, I forgot. I left out a word here. Why did Jesus say? Love is the most important thing in life. Come on, there's no bad answer here. No bad answer. Without love, where would we be? Take love back to Adam and Eve. They loved apples, evidently. <laughs> that, that you say that in the microphone. Yeah, we're going to say that on the microphone. <laughs> I just said they loved apples. Okay. <laughs> evidently, yes. My God, I never thought about it that way. <laughs> I'm not going to say any more about that. <laughs> well, something that's been through my mind through this whole lesson, it's so easy to love the lovable people, and it's so difficult to love the unlovable people, and yet Jesus showed us time after time after time that he loved the least and the lost. Okay. And that's one of the main things that is challenging for me. Yeah. And I imagine for many of us in here, but it's so easy to love the lovable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good, thank you. Okay, one more question. <laughs> Think of a time when you witnessed a loving deed. What impressed you most about the situation? A loving deed. Someone did something really special for someone. Jean? Well, I didn't witness it, but if you were all at uh, Gene Mark's funeral, the son talked about his dad when he was doing Doctors Without Borders, and he was treating a, a lady about to give birth, and it was, it was not going to end well for anybody, and, there, and she needed blood, and he gave his own blood to her. And I don't know if it gets any better than that. <laughs> no. Very, very special doctor. Admired, respected by every doctor in this county. Uh, Dudley can tell you stories, others can tell you stories. Uh, but what, the, what caught me by surprise a little bit of all the things that came out about Jean Murphy? 9,000 deliveries? Do the math. How many times did he sit and hold that patient's hand all night long? Uh, everybody else go home. I'll, I'll let you know when you need to come back. I'm with her. Doctors don't do that. They just, I 
I'm sorry. Well, okay. I'm sorry we got sidetracked here. Okay. Let's uh, close this. Uh, okay. The greatest, the great commandment with the two components, uh, love for God and love for neighbor, uh, lies in the center of our response to all that Christ has done for us, all that he has done for us. Our response must not focus on what we make, what, what will make us feel sig significant, effective, or indisposable. Rather, we must keep coming back to obedience, recognizing all that God has done for us and what we can do, what we can do for our neighbors in grateful response to God. In grateful response. Okay, I don't know how many of you um, make note of this, but uh, these are other Bible verses that uh, relate to uh, loving God and others. A um, lot, of, lot of good stuff. Okay, let's uh, close in prayer. Father God, thank you for, uh, as Bill said, this class, this church, uh, we have so much to be thankful for. We are incredibly blessed. Um, we thank you. Uh, we thank you for always being there. Always being there. Thicker or thin, you're always there. And uh, help us, Father, to lean a little, a little more uh, toward you on your big shoulder. Help us to uh, lean a little more on you real simple. Uh, it's hard to let go sometimes. By the way, love you. Uh, the list is long. Top of the list. Top of the list. It's your son Jesus. And we thank you for him. It's in his special, beautiful name that we pray. Amen. Amen.